Are you getting ready to transfer money within QuickBooks between say a bank account and a savings? And you're wondering what's the best way to do it so you don't accidentally get duplicates? Well, you are in the right place. If we've never met before, hello, I'm Candice Camphor. I love to help business owners and bookkeepers create confidence with QuickBooks. And today we're talking all about transfers. So if you are looking for the desktop version, go up above or down below, I will link it for you. If you're looking for the online version, let's jump in and get this figured out. So there's actually three main ways that you can do transfers within QuickBooks. And I'm going to share them with you because I feel like knowledge is power. So why not uh, understand the differences? So the first thing is you may be using the business view. You might be using the accountant view. Either way, when you come up here to the plus, you are going to see transfers. So this is one way that you can do them. It's probably one of the easiest. Now there is an assumption when I'm teaching this to you that you've already set up both your bank account and your savings account within QuickBooks. Remember, we're talking business accounts not personal accounts. Okay. So this is moving money between your business accounts. If you need, how do you do that with personal? We have a different video. I'll link it up above and down below for you. So go ahead and go in to the plus new. I'll show you one of the ways you get to pick. There's three. You get to pick which one you like best. And I'd love to know in the comments, which one did you choose? So come here and click on transfer. You are going to easily choose. It's, it tells you right here, where did it come from? It's probably one of reason. One of the reasons it's my favorite is you're going to come here and you're going to say it came from the checking. It is going to the savings and it's going to tell you over here to the right. What is the balance that you have in each of these accounts? How much do you have in the business checking? How much do you have in the savings? This is based off of QuickBooks. It may not be accurate depending on if you're current with your data entry, then you're going to put in the amount you're transferring. Remember, because we're impacting moving money between two asset accounts. One transaction takes care of both of the accounts. So we're going to put in $150 here and we'll put it in for December. Let's say 15. Let's say it's a mid month transfer and we're going to say monthly transfer in the memo. You can do whatever you want. You can add a memo. You don't have to. You can add a screenshot if you want here by adding an attachment. And then you can come over here. You can make it reoccurring if you have it happen every single month. And then over here, you're going to choose save and close, or you can drop it down and do save and new. So in this example, because we're just doing one transfer, we're going to click save and close. Boom. You just recorded the transfer into two accounts. So now when you come over here to transactions and let's go down to your chart of accounts, might be under bookkeeping, depending on what version of QuickBooks Online you're using. You're going to come over here and you can click view register under your savings. And you're going to see there's the 150 that we just recorded in our transfer. And you'll notice right here it says checking and here it says it's a deposit and it, it the type is transfer. Now there's another way that you can do your transactions. You can go under deposit and you can record a deposit. So let me show you the second way. Going to come up to the new. Remember, you're only choosing one of these. I'm just giving you a few different options because everybody has different preferences within the software. Transfer is probably my favorite because it's the least like less likely you're going to make a mistake. So you're going to go here under bank deposit. You're going to choose the savings because that's the, where you're putting the money into. You would choose the date that the deposit is happening on. You'd scroll down. You'd say from account. You're going to leave the from account blank. And then under account, you're going to choose your checking. This is where the money is coming from. Okay. So this is where it's going into, and this is where it's coming from. In this example, you can see on the transfer, because it says that clearly you are less likely to make a mistake. So if we wanted the 150, we could record that 150, click save and close, and it would be recorded because I already did as a transfer. I'm not going to hit record in this moment, but you would, if you want to. Actually, you know what? We'll just do it on a different day. Let's say I'll show you all the different options to do. Let's do January 15th. Okay. And we'll do 150. So you can see how it looks different when it's a bank deposit. So I'm choosing to do this one on a different date. You would choose one of the three methods I'm showing you to record it. Okay. So I'm going to click save and close. And now I have a transfer that came from this feature. I have a deposit 
in the next month. So you can use any function you want and you can choose to change it at any point. So you might have thought, I'm going to use transfers. Now I want to use bank deposit because I like it better. It doesn't matter. You can choose to switch at any point. Just to stay consistent once you've decided so you don't accidentally mess it up. Okay. So now we see all of these transactions. And if we move over to the checking account as the type of register, you'll see the different transactions in here as well. Remember, you only need to record it once to have the different transactions. All right, now let's go over to the Bing feed and let me show you the third way that you can enter it. So we're gonna go under transactions, we'll go to the bank and we're on savings now. You're going to see there's a transaction here. It's because it's already been recorded. So the if you've already recorded it as a transfer or you've already recorded as a deposit in the bank feed, you would match it, okay? That way you've only entered it once. If it hasn't already been added and you wanna record it straight in the bank feed, you would click record and then you would choose that it came from the checking account and you would click add. Now be careful, if you have the opportunity to match, always look to see what the date is, make sure that it matches the exact transaction and instead of adding it again, if you've already used the transfer or the bank deposit feature, when you come to the bank feed, you just want to match it because it's just telling the system. So what is a bank feed? Let's just talk about that for a moment. It's where you've synced QuickBooks with your bank and it brings in all the transactions. Okay. That doesn't mean they haven't already been added. If there's an opportunity to match them, that's where you need to be. You need to know if you're using adding the features within QuickBooks or if you're matching them in the bank feed. Typically you do one or the other. I gave you three options to enter your transfers, but you get to pick which one is best for you. Let me know below. What did you pick? Are you going to do the transfer? Are you going to record the deposit? Or are you going to record it directly in the bank feed as a transfer? Or are you going to just match it in the bank feed because you chose one of the other options? Okay, this is actually super powerful knowing that the bank feed brings it in and you get to choose. Are you matching it? Or are you adding it? It is very different. So you want to make sure you're aware if you see your match choices in here. If you're like, I'm not really sure if I've already added it. I want to go check, go to your register here, look for it. And if you're like, oh yeah, it's already there. Great. That tells you that all you need to do is match it. And this is one of the biggest mistakes I often see people making. It's not fully understanding how to optimize the bank feed, meaning how to use it properly, right? So we're going to click match. Now it'll say, okay, we found that that was already in our QuickBooks. So we're going to go to the register and we'll see a C here. So the R means that it was reconciled. The C means it cleared the bank feed. And then these ones haven't yet because they haven't actually processed through the system yet. Okay. Once they do, they'll be sitting in the bank feed ready to match. So let me know which way are you going to do your transfers. Did you have any big ahas? I can't wait to hear them. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And guess what? We send out our tips and tricks every single week through email. So if you don't want to miss one, go up above or down below and we'll send them directly to you. We also let you know about workshops and trainings that we have coming up, which if you're wanting to learn more about how to use QuickBooks for your business, all the different features that it has available, check out our customizing QuickBooks workshop. I'll put the link up above and down below. I can't wait to see you inside our next tip and trick. Have an amazing day. Thank you so much for being part of my community.